Two extra perspective now this month marks 18 years since Jennifer Ann Crescente was shot and killed by her former boyfriend. The high school senior was 18 years of age at the time and her family is grappling with the fact that not only has she been gone as long as she was alive, they're now having to actively work to keep her killer incarcerated. This is the focus of my latest episode of Borderland Crimes. Oh, there we go. You have to see this one just because I love that one. She was pouting. I mean, to think that it's been 18 years now, right? Yeah, and, and she'd be a psychologist and probably married and have babies and all the things she wanted. Dr. Elizabeth Richeson was Jennifer's grandmother. She practices clinical and medical psychology here in El Paso and would often take her granddaughter with her to professional conferences. But you know, so we used to get in a little trouble together and laugh together, but just a sweetheart. She would have, she would have been a great psychologist. Jennifer was shot and killed on February 15, 2006 in Austin, Texas, where she lived with her mother. Just the day before, the Las Cruces-born teen told her grandmother on the phone she was once again talking with her former boyfriend, Justin Crabb. And I asked why she was talking to someone that didn't sound like he was a, a good person or a healthy person mentally. And she says, Grandma, I think I can help him. Crab had just gotten out of a correctional boot camp days before. We'll never know the details of those last minutes or seconds of her life, but as they were going through that wooded area, all I know is that she was ahead of him and he shot her in the back of the head and uh, left her there. She was, if there's anything positive, she died immediately because no one found her for a couple of days and she would have been there on her own dying. Crab confessed to killing Jennifer, but never said why. Her grandmother has one theory. The more she confronted him on drug use, the more he was annoyed with her. And he actually told her friends that he was planning to kill her. He says, you know, she's ruining my life. And so he followed through on that threat. Crab was charged with murder. But on August 1st, 2007, the Travis County District Attorney announced they offered Crabb a deal and he was sentenced to 35 years in prison with the possibility of parole. And to this day, he has no remorse. He's never apologized. He's never said, what was I thinking? Since Jennifer's death, her dad started a nonprofit, Jennifer Ann's group. They're acting like it's real, but really it's fake to educate teens about the warning signs of abusive dating partners. In fact, they just sponsored an event on February 24th in El Paso. Dr. Richardson is the advisory chair for the organization. When you educate the youth, ideally they take that forward in their lives and will not, will understand and not tolerate abusive relationships, domestic violence. And now they're advocating for Justin to stay in prison. He was eligible for parole in August of 2023. Jennifer's family wrote letters pleading for the board to keep the killer behind bars. What did you say in your statement to the parole board? Basically what I said was that I think that he's a sociopath or a psychopath that again, showing no remorse. How do you kill someone in cold blood? How do you kill someone without the need to protect your life. How do you make a decision that someone that you purportedly befriended or maybe cared about one day killed them in cold blood? How do you do that without that remorse? How could he come out into society? In this episode of Borderline Crimes, the outcome of Justin Crabb's parole hearing and how Jennifer is helping change lives in the years after her death. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on your favorite listening platform and visit the story on KVIA.com for information on Jennifer Ann's group and the warning signs of a dangerous relationship.